Hello, hello. So today I am knotting this gorgeous autumnal bracelet. You can kind of see that there's a leaf at the top and we're going into the acorn now. And I'm just gonna be knotting and chatting with you guys. You seem to enjoy these kinds of videos. I enjoy making them, so I thought I'd make another one. You might already recognize this bracelet because I recently did a stream. If you don't know, I stream on Twitch and I was just live knotting this bracelet yesterday. If you missed it, you can watch a replay of that on my Masha Streams channel, which is always in the description of my videos and I'll leave that stream linked in the card and in the description as well. But yeah, I'm just gonna be knotting and chatting with you guys, kind of updating you on what's been going on in my life, I guess, and just more of a trainer of thought. So if you have a bracelet to make, you know, sit down, you can knot with me and it can be, then we can just hang out and chat <laughs> a little bit. You can't really see me knotting because my hands are a little bit out of frame, but there's no way that I can really position it in a way that you can see the bracelet and me knotting at the same time. So we're gonna have to deal with that. But I really like this pattern. I think it's so cool. There's so many colors in it though. I already have, ooh, one, two, three, four, five. I already got five colors in the bracelet as is, and we need to weave in two more colors as we're going along. So this is gonna be an interesting experience. There's already, there's already quite a few colors going on. I don't necessarily love the background color that I'm using here. I would have much preferred a lighter background color. So something of the same sort of variety, like another brown, but a much lighter brown. I think it would uh, make for a better contrast with the actual acorn itself. I think the acorn sort of blends in a little bit um, with the background, but you know, it is what it is. I didn't really have, um, I had a string that I could have used, but I didn't have enough of that string, so I ended up choosing this one, which isn't ideal, but I think it works out. I need to do the color switch here. So yeah, this, this color that I'm talking about, this is the color that the acorn is in. So not the branch of the acorn, so like not the, I don't know, the little thing of it, but um, the actual acorn itself, and I think it's a little bit too similar to the base strings and to the background color, but it's fine. It's fine. It works out. You can still kind of see it. Like it's not that bad. So if you don't follow me on my social media, you might have missed the fact that I was actually gone for a week. I went to visit my sister in the Czech Republic. I had a lovely trip. And during this trip, I basically didn't do anything. I didn't make any bracelets. I didn't even log on to my martial arts Instagram or bracelet book or anything. I didn't look at any patterns. I didn't check any of the challenge posts that people have created. And I just took some time off to myself and you know, enjoy my time with my sister, enjoy my time in the Czech Republic. And I did. I I had a great holiday. I got to see my sister, which is always a nice thing. I miss her quite a lot because I don't get to see her that often. She lives kind of close. I mean, the Czech Republic is relatively close to London, but still, you know, you have to take a plane to get there and stuff. And it's not something that I can always do, especially with, you know, this year and everything that's been going on. I'm very lucky that I managed to actually get out now. Although I still have to quarantine on the way back. So I'm now back home and I need to stay home for two weeks because I flew in from another country. So that's fun. Didn't need to do that when I booked the tickets because uh, travel around Europe was without quarantine. But in between me booking my tickets and me actually flying, they introduced it specifically for the Czech Republic. So, I mean, it is what it is. You just got to do what you got to do, you know? It's fine. I'll just deal with it. It's not something I'm not used to at this point. <laughs> As sad as that is, it's something that you get used to pretty quickly. But yeah, I'm really glad I had that trip. I had a lovely time. We uh, did a lot of sort of sightseeing. Um, we went to a bunch of different castles. We went hiking. We rode some bikes. Um, and we saw some really beautiful scenery as well when we did that. We fed some horses. Um, we went to Prague. We saw Prague. Um, it was just, it was a great time. I really like going there. Czech Republic is so beautiful. I always love seeing my sister, so it was a wonderful time. And I'm excited to go again at some point, but I don't know when that will be. I kind of want to go to Russia, because <laughs> as happy as I was um, getting back from Russia and being here again in London, I still kind of want to go because, you know, I miss my husband and everything. I miss the cats. I want to see everyone. My family is there. Most importantly, of course, I miss Stefan, so I just, I want to see him, but... Um, I don't know if that's something that is realistic at this point because I'm afraid to get stuck there again Especially because like all the countries are expecting a second wave and everything like it's just such a mess <sighs> But again, you know, it is what it is. It's just something you got to deal with But things that have been keeping me sort of entertained and sane during this really weird time, I guess uh, Has been Harry Potter weirdly. I uh, sort of go in phases um, I, I was always a massive a Potter fan. I read it for the first time when I was like 11 uh, or 12, I don't remember. 
um, and I had a great time, absolutely loved it. Oh yeah, I use a ruler sometimes to push up the knots of my alphas to make sure that they are going in the correct direction, and then if I think that it's going a little bit wonky, I can sort of adjust it with the ruler, so I like to do that to sort of push it up a little bit. Um, but yeah, I was always a massive fan of Harry Potter, I always enjoyed it quite a lot. I read it for the first time when I was 11. Uh, I haven't reread the entire series basically since then. I've sort of been in the process of rereading it very slowly now. I, and, and I don't reread it slowly in the sense that I read slowly. When I read, I usually sit down for like a couple of hours and read it, but it's just that it, I find it really difficult to allocate the time to actually do reading because I always feel like I should be doing something more productive. Um, so yeah, I just find it hard to just sit down and read. But I did read today for quite a while and I really enjoyed that. I'm currently on book two um, and it, it's, oh, I love it. It's such, I just, I, I just love it. I absolutely love it. It's such a great series. It brings me so much joy. I don't know why I haven't reread it in such a long time and I'm so excited to actually finally reread the entire thing. Um, I, whenever I, I only read it for the first time when I was 11, um, and I think, I basically, I barely remember reading the last three books. I don't remember reading book five, six, and seven. I know that I did, I definitely did read them, uh, but I barely remember it. I only really remember the films, I don't remember anything in the books, so books five, six, and seven are the ones that I'm most excited about rereading. Because the first book I reread a bunch of times um, when I was a kid, and I definitely, I even reread it in Russian a couple of times and that was actually really fun. I really enjoyed reading that book in Russian. Um, I don't know, it just kind of, it gives off a different vibe. I don't know how to explain it to people who aren't bilingual, but consuming the same media in two different languages, it's it's the same thing. So it's not like it's a different plot or anything. It's the same exact thing, but it just kind of gives off a different vibe. I don't know how to describe it. And I definitely like the vibe of the Russian Harry Potter series. Um, I don't agree with some of the translations. I think they're a little bit weird in some places, like the names of things. Um, I would have translated differently in my opinion, but nonetheless, I really, really enjoy the vibe. I think um, just the way that it's translated is, in some areas I don't agree with it, but in some areas I think it's really beautiful. But yeah, I'm really excited to uh, reread the more sort of heavier books. Although, to, I'm not gonna lie to you, I absolutely am in love with, um, I really enjoyed reading book one. I'm absolutely in love with rereading book two at the moment because it's just, it's still at that point in the series where it's kind of light. Like, it hasn't gotten super heavy yet. It's sort of childish and it's very light. And I love it. You just get to experience Hogwarts, you know, you just kind of get to sit in on the lessons and just be there and like hang out with them. And that's the thing that I really enjoy, like just hanging out in Hogwarts without, like I, as much as I enjoy the plot and I really enjoy the heavier stuff, I really just like hanging out in Hogwarts and just chilling and being there. So I'm really enjoying my reread at the moment. But I am very excited about um, getting to the more heavier books. As I said, I barely remember rereading the fifth, sixth, and seventh book. Um, I remember reading them, but I barely remember the plot or anything. And there's specific points in the book uh, that I'm very excited to get to. And I'll, and I'll try to talk about these without explicitly spoiling it for people who haven't read it, but I'll, I'll try, <laughs> I'll try. Um, some things that I'm very, very excited about is, um, uh, how do I talk about this in a way that is not spoilery? Um, in the fifth book, I really want to read that scene with the twins, and um, like they did a big thing with the Umbridge in the fifth book. I need to insert some green string here. They did a big thing with Umbridge, um, and I'm really excited to reread that scene because I remember laughing about that scene so hard when I read it for the first time. It was like my favorite scene in the entire series, probably. I just, I, I remember laughing about that. Um, I don't have normal tape, so I'm just gonna use the washi tape here to tape this down, uh, which is not something I should be doing because I don't have that much of it, but it's fine. We'll pretend you don't see it. We will pretend. But yeah, I remember laughing about that scene, just nonstop, like hysterically laughing about it when I read it for the first time. And I, I just, I got so much enjoyment out of that scene and I really want to reread that because I haven't reread it since I read it that first time. Uh, but some other scenes that I really want to reread, I don't know, honestly, like just the entirety of the books, I feel like I read them for the first time when I was a kid. Like I read them when I was like 11 or 12. That was over 10 years ago. I'm 22 now. That was such a long time ago. I'm just really curious how I'm gonna see, how I'm gonna view the entire situation from a more adult perspective. Um, see if my opinions have changed on any of the characters. You know, see if my opinions, see if I notice anything different in the series that I didn't notice before. 
um, I'm really excited to do that. And then also, you know, I'm really, I can't say excited because it's something really, you know, tragic. It's not something to be excited about, but I am very, I'm looking forward to rereading the more heavier scenes and the scenes that are gonna make me cry in, um, you know, the later books in like book five. There's a specific scene that I'm thinking about in book five that is definitely gonna make me cry. Um, there is a specific scene that I'm thinking about in book six that is definitely gonna make me cry uh, and that I barely remember reading for the first time. I might have skipped over it to be honest because I was a child and I was scared. Um, and then obviously book seven is the heaviest of all of them and there is also a very specific number of scenes that are definitely gonna make me cry. So yeah, I'm interested to see how I'm gonna react to those scenes uh, nowadays from a more adult perspective and I wanna feel all the feels, honestly. I, the reason I've gotten it into it recently is because Harry Potter TikTok has found me. Like, I swear to you, I, I liked one video on TikTok that was even remotely Harry Potter related. And then instantly my entire For You page has just become a Harry Potter mess, like everything. Like the entirety of my For You page before was like humor stuff and uh, you know, cat videos or like funny animal videos. That has completely gone. There is no more of that. Like it completely erased, it evaporated. And now my entire For You page on TikTok is just Harry Potter POVs and um, like edits and stuff. And uh, some of them are really sad. I've been reposting some of them on my uh, Instagram stories, but I save some of them and like, they just make me cry, you know? They just get me in the feels, they make me really sad. And then there's people posting like theory videos and such. I get so obsessed, I end up like watching exclusively. Right now I'm obsessed with Harry Potter. There's been other things that I've been obsessed about. The same thing happened with like Avatar and Game of Thrones and other series that I watch. Uh, but right now I'm obsessing over Harry Potter and so like my entire YouTube feed as well, like my YouTube recommended his entire like Harry Potter video essays and theory uh, videos and stuff. And oh, I love it. I love it. Like people doing quizzes um, and challenging each other to see like who, who's who got the best Harry Potter knowledge. I usually play along um, to those kinds of videos and I really enjoy them. So yeah, I've seen people like in my comments sometimes ask like, oh, is those, are those the Harry Potter books I see in the background of your videos? Yes, yes you do. Those are all the Harry Potter books <laughs> that you see in the background of my videos. I didn't uh, have them before. I actually very recently bought the um, books. The first time I read the books, I read them at my aunt's house. Oh, I have my aunt who lives in Miami. Well, not Miami specifically, but Florida, um, near Miami, whatever. <laughs> I, some, I used to visit her sometimes and I still do sometimes. Um, and she has the entire collection and that's how I got to read the books for the first time. I read them at her house um, and that was great. But I never owned the collection myself and I was always really, I always really wanted to do that but they, they are so expensive to buy. And I, but I managed to find a place that sells them in bulk and then at that time they also, so when I say in bulk I mean like the entire series at once. And also it, there was like this massive discount so I was able to buy them at like a cheaper price and I was so happy. And so I'm, ah, oh, I just can't. I know, like for people who don't, <laughs> care about Harry Potter, this video is probably, like, they've probably already clicked off, honestly, but I, I hope this isn't too boring. I'm just very, very passionate about this at the moment. Like, I'm really excited. Like, I don't know how to describe it. It's just been keeping me going. Um, and it's just been making me happy, like, rereading everything and just, like, watching all these theories and stuff. It's just, ah, oh, I love it. To be honest, I've never been into fan fiction. Like, people uh, recommend fan fiction to me because, like, I, as I said, I get obsessed with, like, TV shows and stuff that I watch. I get really obsessed with these kind of things. And people always tell me like, oh, you should read fan fiction. Like, oh, this helps me sort of like get over my obsession, I guess, or like feed into it. I don't know. I've never really been into it. I've never read fan fiction ever. I mean, does The Cursed Child count as fan fiction? I'd say so. I read The Cursed Child. I, I think that counts as fan fiction. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> I didn't like it. Though, to be fair, when I got it for the first time, I did actually like it. I read it and I enjoyed it. Um, like, I really had a great time reading it. But then, I think that was entirely nostalgia and it was just because I was forcing myself to like, like I really, I so badly wanted to like it that I did. But then when I had some distance from it, I realized that, oh yeah, this makes absolutely no sense at all. It doesn't fit in with the characterization of any of the characters and I hate it. So yeah, I don't know. I see it as fan fiction. It's not canon to me, which, you know, you can say what you want about that, but that is my opinion. All right, I need a, oh, oh, this string is getting so short. I need to replace this dark brown string. I think I'm gonna, ooh, I've been filming for like 20 minutes, oh God. 
It's probably not 20 minutes for you because I'm gonna cut out all the bits of pieces that I like this right now. I'm trying to say a sentence and I can't say a sentence. This is what I usually cut out when I'm editing. <laughs> But yeah, I should probably wrap this video up. Sorry for rambling about Harry Potter for the entire video. I had some notes um, about what I could talk about potentially if I like ran out of topics to talk about. I made some notes about things that I could talk about. Um, Harry Potter was not even on those notes. So you know how well that goes. I never script my videos, but even when I try to like kind of plan them out, they go like this. So that's great. <laughs> but I hope you, you know, enjoyed the video nonetheless. Um, I'm really enjoying this pattern. I think it's great. I definitely recommend it. Um, it's kind of in the vibe for the challenge that I gave for the month. If you don't know, I do challenges every month. Uh, and if you want to participate in the challenge, you should watch the wrap up video for the previous month. So the wrap up video for the month of August in which I announced the new challenge of the month for September. Uh, but yeah, this month's challenge of the month is basically like an autumnal pattern for alphas. There's also a normal pattern. Um, and this is something that basically I'm making for the challenge, I guess. Uh, and I really, really enjoy this pattern and I highly recommend it. Also, I went through the hashtag. I looked at some of the uh, patterns and bracelets that people have already created and I love them. I'll be reposting some of them to my Instagram story soon, so yeah. But yeah, I think that's gonna be it for today. This video is already way too long, much longer than I expected it to be. Sorry for rambling <laughs> for so long about Harry Potter, but I hope you enjoyed the video nonetheless. Maybe you knotted with me a little bit. If you want more content from me, then you should follow me on Twitch. I try to live stream about twice a week. I'm gonna be live streaming tomorrow actually, and I did yesterday as well. So you should definitely follow me on there to get notified when I go live and maybe knot with me some more. Cause as I said, I did actually live knot this bracelet just yesterday. But yeah, other than that, thank you very much for watching. I wanna give a special shout out to my patrons whose names are gonna appear on screen right now. Thank you guys so much for your support. If you also wanna become a patron, there's a link in the description where you can sign up and get exclusive perks for your donations. And that's it really. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you haven't watched Harry Potter or read it, you should definitely do that. You're missing out. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.